Hello and welcome back to Misconceptions in History. And today, because I talked about the B-36 last week, I decided this week I wanted to talk about its competitor, the aircraft that almost took its place, and that's the YB-35. This extremely unique experimental heavy bomber that was designed as a flying wing, which is really only a concept that had really been explored since the 20s at this time. Now this aircraft's extremely unique design honestly wouldn't be really produced again until later generations that we're going to see with aircraft such as the B-2 and the B-21. But let's go ahead and look at how this aircraft came to be. And we can get that started with this man, Jack Northrup. Now, while working for Douglas Aircraft in the 1930s, Northrup became really interested in the idea of a flying wing, and he thought it was going to be the future, the next generation of aircraft production. And in 1939, he formed his own company, Northrop Corporation. And he did this because at the time, the Army had requested for a new high-altitude medium bomber. And he decided his flying wing concept would be perfect for this. So Northrop put together a proposal for the Army Air Corps at the time for his aircraft, the Northrop N-1. And this was his proposal for a flying wing design that would be used as a medium bomber. And he actually went through several design phases for this aircraft. And even though the aircraft wasn't picked up, it would be used the basis for the Northrop N-1M, which was a mock-up of his N-1 concept that he had proposed to the Army. This aircraft isn't a true flying wing due to the fact that it actually has a twin rudder system with a single horizontal stabilizer running between them. And the aircraft was actually a successful proof of concept for the flying wing design. Now, when 1941 rolls around, the United States is observing the issues, the fighting in Europe that's happening, the Germans making a move, and so they put in an order for a new long-range, large-wing bomber. The two companies that make a proposal are Convair with their XB-36 design, and of course Northrop with their XB-35 design. And Convair went with their XB-36 design of this rather large, large-winged aircraft because they felt that it was easier to produce when the need arose for warfare versus Northrop going with this new radical design as that it could be lighter, it could be faster, and carry a heavier payload, even though it was more complicated. A part of Northrop's agreement with the Army for building this aircraft is that they would get funding to build a prototype, and this aircraft was known as the Northrop N-9M. And this aircraft is actually a one-third scale model of the XB-35. Now, the reason for the development of this prototype actually was twofold. One, it allowed them to develop the aircraft's wings, find its flight characteristics, improve the aircraft design before they began full-scale production of the XB-35, also to train pilots to fly this incredibly unique aircraft. Now, very similar to the B-36's development, the B-35 took years to get past the development stage and into actual flight testing. So it would actually take from 1942 until June of 1946 until we see a B-36 take off the ground. So like its competitor, it really didn't even get to see action in World War II, which had been its intended purpose. Additionally, just like the B-36, it had several development problems in the beginning. And in fact, during the early flight test, they found out that the vibration from the engine, the overall noise it would make and things like that, the frequency it would hum at, would actually damage its contra-rotating propellers. And interestingly enough, these issues were not the result of the aircraft's design itself. It actually came down to the production of the propellers, the engines. There was actually some electrical issues that the Army Air Force failed to provide proper equipment for the aircraft. So the aircraft was pretty much doomed to fail from the start. And they only managed to fix the issues after Jack Northrop himself grounded all the prototype XB-35s and prevented them from being used until everyone came together and fixed the issues that the aircraft was having. And while all of this was happening, the Army Air Force was becoming the United States Air Force, and their doctrine was changing. The new Air Force called for a conversion of the YB-35 to jet engine, making it now the B-49. And the 13 other YB-35s that were sitting unused, never flown, were in the process of having to be forced into being converted into jet-powered aircraft. You might be saying something along the lines of, well, the jet should have made it faster, better payload. But you got to remember, jet engines at this time were not very efficient. They were just fuel guzzlers. And because of that, the flight range of this aircraft was now cut in half. 
which now meant that the newly christened B-49 could not fall into the new United States Air Force's doctrine on long-range strategic bombing against the USSR, and basically meant that this aircraft was useless. Now, Jack Northrop did everything he could to keep his dream alive. He had the 8-engine version of the YB-49 converted to a 6-engine version, trying to make it more efficient. And there was actually even a plan to take a newly developed Northrop turboprop engine and apply it back onto the airframe of a XB-35, making it the EB-35B. But when the project was canceled, the Air Force actually gave all of Northrop's designs on his turboprop engine to GE and had them take over the project for him. Due to a multitude of factors, many of them outside of Jack Northrop's control, his dream of a flying wing aircraft was pretty much ended before it could really even get off the ground. In fact, only one single airframe ever really flew of the XB-35 design. That was the first one. The rest were converted into 49s before they could ever fly. To be honest, there was probably some political wheeling and dealing going on. Northrop himself claimed that he had attempted to be persuaded by Secretary of the Air Force Stuart uh, Symington into basically merging his company with Convair. That would basically would have been a hostile takeover, and he wasn't going to have any of it. And then right after he didn't agree to that, his contracts were all canceled. And honestly, I can say there is some suspicion because Symington later on became the president of Convair after he retired from the Air Force. So, you know, there could be something in it. But in all honesty, the aircraft was just too ahead of its time. There were just so many issues that they just didn't know how to handle properly, and because of that, it just couldn't happen. And while the B-35 and 49 were not successes, he did have success with other aircraft, and even managed to get into the jet age with the Northrop F-89 Scorpion, a personal favorite of mine. A few other jet aircraft he managed to get involved with were aircraft such as the T-38 Talon and the F-5 Tiger Shark. He sadly left the company he created in 1952 and basically went into obscurity. He kind of dabbled in real estate and lost most of his personal fortune. And towards the end of his life, he even tried to convince NASA to create a low-drag, high-lift concept vehicle, kind of like a flying wing. However, at the end of his life, he was given one final encouragement that his dreams were not silly and they shouldn't be abandoned. So in a year before he died, he was given clearance for Northrop's newest project, the B-2 Spirit, based upon his designs of the YB-35 and 49. And it actually should be noted that the B-2 has the same wingspan as the YB-49. Before he left the facility, he wrote on a piece of paper because he had lost the ability to speak, now I know why God has kept me alive for 25 years. But there you have it, a look at the B-35, an aircraft that was supposed to be the future, and of innovative flying and just really couldn't get off the ground. They tried, they tried different modifications, but it just came at the wrong time, and even throwing jet engines on it at the time just couldn't save it. However, this aircraft has left a lasting legacy, not only because of the B-2 Spirit, which is an amazing aircraft in itself, but now even the B-2 Spirit has a successor in the B-21 Raider. And to this day, there's more and more flying wing concepts coming about as technology allows them to be more stable, and easier to use and build. So that's it for today. I thank you for joining me, and I look forward to talking to you all the next time.